Welcome to our Election 2016 Forum organized by the League of Women Voters of Greater Las Cruces. I'm Fred Martino. Today we focus on New Mexico House District 39 with Democrat Rodolfo Martinez and Republican John Zimmerman. Candidates will have one minute to respond to each question. There will be no follow-up questions and no rebuttals, so we ask the candidates to offer their position and refrain from commenting on their opponents. The questions were submitted to the league by the public. We ask the studio audience to refrain from any noise during the forum. We'll alternate throughout the half hour, and the first response was chosen by a coin toss. I'm joined by Vicki Simons, past president of the league, and she has our first question. Thank you, Fred. <clears throat> the first question is for Mr. Martinez. Oh, Rudy, I'm supposed to <laughs> Do you support physician assistance in dying? Explain. Physician assistant in dying, I believe, is a matter of the family, the individual making a decision with the support of the family, the doctor, and first of all, God. So um, that is a very tough decision to be made by the family and the individual. So I think it should be left up to them and not dictated by government. Thank you. I do not support uh, uh, assisted suicide uh, in any form. Uh, my faith tells me uh, and that thou shalt not kill, and I believe that is also killing. So therefore, I do not uh, support uh, doctor-assisted suicide. Thank you. John, we'll begin with you on this question. Do you support allowing voters to decide on the legal sale of recreational marijuana in New Mexico? That's an absolutely great question. And uh, when we know all of the uh, benefits, if there are any, are the detriments of <coughs> marijuana, then and only then should it be uh, brought before the voters. Uh, First of all, the Federal Drug Administration doesn't know the strength of different kinds of marijuana. There are many different strains. Currently, the one we're more familiar with is the Mississippi strain, but there are other strains. And so when we talk about the amount of THC uh, that is present, uh, the other strains have, may, may have more. In fact, they do. And so we don't know the full effects until we have full evidence of the full effects uh, I don't think that should be a question that should be uh, even uh, uh, brought before the voters. Okay. Rudy? I believe that um, before any legislation is presented uh, for a vote for, to legalize recreational marijuana is we need to go through a process that we have a strong definition of what the effects are as far as uh, with issues such as public safety, uh, safety of the individuals using the marijuana. We currently have the allowance of medical marijuana, which is used by prescription, which is a form of pain uh, relief for many individuals. But as far as the recreational, I would consider voting for it after all these questions are, are answered and making sure that our, our public is safe with individuals using the marijuana. Okay, thank you. The next question is for Rudy. How would you provide incentives for businesses to relocate to our state? Explain, if any. There are many for forms of incentives that could be provided for businesses to move into New Mexico. One is making sure that we have the workforce that is required by that company, that would be first and foremost because most companies would come in if the workforce was not available, it would be a setback for them as well as New Mexico. Also, we need to make sure that uh, they, the companies, would uh, also comply with all rules and regulations uh, presented by New Mexico. And if there is a moment of negotiation to make sure that these companies are the right fit for New Mexico, then uh, it would be appropriate to endorse them to come into the state. Thank you. 
there are several several things that's already been done to uh, to lure businesses. Uh, we currently have something called LIDA, LIDA funding. Um, that's to encourage businesses, uh, startup companies, to help them. Uh, and uh, those funds are already available for to be applied for. Uh, they are being currently used. Uh, I recently uh, actually uh, recommended to uh, John Barella, our Secretary Barella, uh, some leader funding for a firm in Grant County, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Little Toad Creek. It was a brewery, a uh, microbrewery, and um, they're creating jobs. And so when we, when we look at economic development, your, your small businesses is one that actually create jobs. Uh, we do need to get, uh, attract uh, anchor tenants, and uh, we have uh, uh, the state force is actually, our state uh, people are actually out doing that currently. So those are issues that are things that are happening today. Okay, a little more broad approach uh, beyond just incentives. Our next question, John, for you. What should the state legislature do to improve the economy in New Mexico? Well, that, that again is a good question. Uh, how do you improve the economy? First of all, we need to, uh, we need to create jobs. And uh, uh, we have to attract good paying jobs, uh, jobs that, uh, that, that people want to, to have. Uh, in my own case, uh, I raise my children. Uh, they all have college degrees and they all work out of state. And we have to ask the question, why? And when we go back and we look at our, our state's history, uh, go back 104 years. Um, we're doing the same thing over and over, and uh, we haven't changed. And we have to change the way we're doing business. We we have a, a very high corporate tax rate that is being decreased, but there's also pressure to to reinstitute it. When we are competitive with our neighboring states, somewhere around 5% corporate tax rate, then and only then will we attract businesses to New Mexico. Jobs are certainly a priority to increase our, or grow our economy. We have uh, opportunities in New Mexico. You know, we have great uh, sunlight. So one of the areas that we need to consider is renewable energy, solar, wind, geothermal, to create the, those good paying jobs. Also, we need to make sure that taxes are fair. So we need to look at our tax structure to make sure that we are providing the right tax rate for individuals and individual companies coming to the state to be able to be profitable, but yet provide uh, the jobs that, that we need in New Mexico. Okay. We'll move on to education now. Do you support, Rudy, do you support universal preschool education? If so, how would you bring it about? I support education as a whole. I really support the early ch childhood uh, process because that's where the learning actually starts, from the womb to graduating from university. It's, it's a process that is provided not only by teachers, it's provided by parents. So we can move forward and make sure that each child is given an opportunity to actually participate and learn as they go through the school system. Also allowing teachers to teach and making sure that they are seen as professionals so they can provide the right education for our children. Thank you. That's an excellent question. Uh, and and I, I support uh, uh, pre-K, but uh, also learning begins at home and uh, responsibility also belongs with the parents. They should, should start uh, early reading uh, with their children. Uh, I did this with my children and my children were, were very avid readers uh, before they uh, actually entered uh, first grade. Uh, talk about education, when we look at look at what's wrong with our education system and why we have poor graduation rates. You know, we, we have a practice right now where we pass, we require teachers to pass children uh, onto the third grade when they can't read at that third grade level. This holds back other children 
as well as that child. And we call this as, as it's called a social, uh, it's gonna hurt them socially. And uh, we need to stop this practice. It, it's it's uh, favored by 85% uh, uh, when you poll it that we stop this. John, we'll move to healthcare now. How would you improve access to healthcare, especially mental healthcare in the state? Well, there's uh, several things that uh, we can do to improve uh, health care within, within our state. Uh, when we talk about uh, the mental health care, I've actually uh, sponsored uh, several initiatives uh, in Grant County, uh, which would address uh, repeat offenders. Uh, I put funding on it. Uh, it, uh, it did not make it through the, the budgetary process. Uh, it was taken by uh, a different organization. So, uh, you know, when we look at uh, local initiatives, uh, we, we want to try to keep uh, people out of prison. Uh, those, that's mental health problems, and we can do that with some of these initiatives that I spoke of. Uh, I actually sponsored a bill uh, to get more rural doctors, uh, out in, uh, which was for osteopathic uh, medicine for the Burrell School of Medicine. It's a loan forgiveness program, and it was signed into law this year and uh, will be available to students uh, at the Burrell School of Medicine. Behavioral health is a big issue across the state, across the nation. Uh, we have seen the outcome that happened uh, when they brought in out-of-state companies to take over the 15 providers. It was a, it was a disaster. The, uh, the suicide rate skyrocketed. In little old Grand County, there were four suicides in one week. So we really need to address the behavioral health issue, starting with providing services and making sure that individuals have access to those services. Uh, we can't be selective. We need to include every individual that seeks help and those that are diagnosed by doctors, like the residency program that uh, I provided funding for, where resident doctors come to rural communities to provide their services. Thank you. The next question moves on to water. How would you allocate increasingly scarce water resources? Water, water, water. That is the lifeblood of everything. Uh, I worked with uh, New Mexico State University, the Water Resource uh, Research Institute, and provided funding so they can start their program of finding out how much water we have in our aquifers. Uh, the state engineers is very good at uh, providing data on surface water, but we lack data on our uh, aquifer water. So, but we need to uh, start programs that, uh, that conserve water and certainly working with our agricultural industry to make sure that these individuals are taking advantage of technology and make sure that water is used to the, to the maximum to grow their crop and make their in industry thrive. I actually sat on the uh, Water and Natural Resources uh, Interim Committee and uh, that, that subject is being tossed around all western states. Uh, we're being uh, challenged constantly uh, by uh, federal regulations, uh, whether or not uh, they will uh, control all streams, arroyas. Um, that's a major problem. Uh, we've also uh, instituted uh, some uh, monuments uh, where uh, in the past ranchers have actually built uh, uh, dirt dams to, uh, to, to stop up the arroyas which, uh, prevent, which provide ponding for their, their cattle. Um, uh, they can't get on and maintain those anymore. So that's gonna be a problem in the future uh, when we look at our, our aquifers, uh, there is studies going on and we provided uh, additional funding for the aquifers to, to keep that study uh, going, uh, to find out just how much water is in our aquifer, how much they're being depleted, and at how, what rate. And there will always be a demand on water as there's gonna be more people. Okay, another environmental question uh, now, but also an economic one, John. Should the state promote renewable energy? If so, how? 
Well, first of all, let's talk about renewable energy. When, when we talk about uh, uh, solar, uh, right now it's being subsidized. Uh, it's been being subsidized heavily. When we talk about wind, it's also being subsidized. Uh, so if we want to be on equal footing, let's, let's, let's level the playing field and let's make it equal footing and uh, let the, com the, uh, the competing industries compete. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much uh, how I feel about it. Uh, we need to look at uh, natural gas is, is a very cheap, it's a very clean burning, uh, and we have an abundance. Uh, when we talk about our, our energy, uh, you know, we, New Mexico relies, 37% uh, of our budget goes, to, to, goes into from the uh, oil and gas industry in this state, and uh, that's significant. So, you know, it's like, uh, are we going to bite the hand that, that feeds us? I would fully support uh, going the renewable energy, solar, wind, geothermal. In fact, I carried a bill to uh, amend the Geothermal Act to allow a small company to start producing electricity, which is being sold out of state. We also need, uh, need to make sure that uh, all industries that are producing gas, oil, uh, whatever industry it is, that their taxes and tax credits and incentives are fair across the board as well. Uh, we need to make sure that we provide clean energy, also good paying jobs, which is very possible with these, these solar. Even though they may be subsidized, but the jobs that are being created are certainly a benefit, not only by paying back those incentives, but moving forward. Okay. Uh, Rudy, the next question for you is on health care. What is the future of the Affordable Care Act in New Mexico, and what are your concerns about its funding? We certainly need to look at providing health care for every resident of New Mexico. Uh, the Affordable Care Act is the beginning, a basis for a process of providing health insurance for every citizen in the state. The concern is the, the amount of money that is, that is being allocated to provide for those services. Uh, if we do not provide enough money to those services, then we lose the match from the federal government, which is we put in one dollar, the feds put in three dollars. So when that goes away, it not only affects individuals, it affects our health care providers, it affects our hospitals, and certainly that's something that we need to improve on to make sure that these uh, individuals that need the, the health care uh, do have the proper care. During the last year we had uh uh, it was really figures were actually released where we had uh, some 830,000 people of our 2.1 uh, million population in our state on Medicaid. Uh, that number is is astronomical, and when we look at it, uh, what is it doing to our state budget? Uh, when we look at our state budget, uh, it's 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 uh, it's devastating. Uh, our health care costs have increased uh, astronomically uh, in the past couple of years uh, because of the, the Obamacare and the cost associated with it. Uh, cost curtailment. How can we uh, maintain cost curtailment? There's uh, been many things uh, tossed around. Uh, they've even talked about co-pays, uh, uh, some kind of a minimum co-pay. Uh, my time's up. Okay. <laughs> we'll move on now to another uh, issue, John. Are you in favor of a professional legislature with legislators being paid a salary? Again, that's a good question. And, uh, you know, I, I actually uh, believe that uh, there's some merit in that uh, of legislators being paid. Then they could be held more accountable. Currently, we are a citizen legislature. Uh, and if we paid a salary, then then perhaps uh, it would be taken probably maybe a little more serious by some. 
um, as opposed to uh, looking at other ways to benefit. Uh, right now, uh, we're a citizen legislature. Uh, the only the ones that can really afford to become legislators are primarily very successful businessmen, um, attorneys, uh, and those that are retired. And um, that really limits the field for potential uh, legislators to, to come to the legislature to provide uh, their input from the citizens within their district. Okay. I believe that New Mexico was based on volunteerism and that's where the process began for legislators as volunteers. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I believe it's worked well and that's some of the concerns that have been brought up about unethical conduct by some. The uh, solution would be to create a impartial ethics commission to make sure that legislators are held accountable for, for their actions. Okay, thank you. Moving, <coughs> moving back to the economy, Rudy. Um, how would you diversify the economy of New Mexico? Again, I go back to, <clears throat> to what we can provide for our state as far as jobs. Certainly we have <clears throat> our bases, we have the oil and gas industry, we have the mining, we have uh, manufacturing to a certain extent. Uh, we have a growing business south, south of us in Santa Teresa, which is, is a growing industry in itself. So these are the things that we need to invest in, but primarily we need to invest in our children so they become educated, become a, a good workforce that is uh, a component of selling ourselves to industry that might come into New Mexico. Well, first of all, I think there's a, there's a, a notion that uh, everybody needs a college degree to succeed. And uh, that just simply does not hold true. Uh, we need to look at uh, trade schools and tech schools. Uh, we need to look at those very seriously. Uh, we need to try to attract industries. Uh, when we don't have the trained workforce in those areas, then we need to, to uh, come up to speed as quickly as possible and uh, obtain that. Uh, currently, uh, or just recently, I attended an uh, economic and rural development meeting in um, Chavez County, and uh, one of the things that they're doing there is that they're they're looking at uh, expanding uh, aircraft maintenance uh, at Eastern Mexico University. It's a tech school. Uh, Central Mexico has a, a, a great program for uh, training uh, students and receiving uh, either certificates or uh, associate's degrees. Okay, we'll move on now, John, uh, and this is a question uh, really that is uh, long term, but it's also short term, something that we're going to be <coughs> hearing a lot about in the next year. How would you balance the budget considering our huge deficits? What programs would you cut and which ones should be left alone? Well, first of all, you have to realize that uh, we're mandated by our state constitution to balance the budget. And uh, we're already uh, one of the highest taxed uh, citizenry in the country. So, uh, you know, you often hear, let's raise <coughs> taxes, uh, to let's just raise taxes. And uh, what we need to do is we need to develop economic incentives to bring better paying jobs uh, into New Mexico to increase our taxpayer base. Those are some of the things we can do. Uh, that, that's easily, easily said, not easily accomplished, uh, because it, the legislation that has to take place to, to make a lot of the rules and regulations that hamper businesses that currently in our state right now, because uh, we're not business friendly and we need to become more business friendly. Okay, Rudy, I'm going to repeat the question because it was a fairly long one, um, longer than some. How would you balance the budget considering our huge deficits? What programs would you cut 
and which ones should be left alone? Well, the short term, we need to really hold our departments accountable. Uh, just news just broke that the state has not collected $193 million from, from the insurance sector. That would go a long way to balance our budget currently. But also, we need to make sure that we do it in a common sense way. Cutting uh, departments by 5% across the board in my opinion, is not the appropriate way to do it because some departments, for example, the courts and corrections, they can't afford to take another cut. Certainly, we need to uphold our educational system, our public education, to make sure our kids are being taught like they should be. Uh, health care, behavioral health care should not be cut. So those are areas that we need to consider on an individual basis. Okay, Rudy, John, thank you so much for spending time with us. We're actually out of time. A half hour goes by very quickly. We appreciate you uh, joining us, and the league does as well, I know. And for Vicki Simons, all of us at KRWG, I'm Fred Martino. Have a great week.